Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about eight books that I read recently. So the first book I'm gonna talk about is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is a book about our main character Galadriel who goes into this very deadly school called Scholomance where once you enter you have to basically be there for four years until you graduate and you either graduate or you die. There is no dropping out, there is no contact with the outside world. This school is very deadly and has lots and lots of monsters that constantly kill roughly 50% of the student population by the graduating year. So basically in this magic system everyone kind of has an affinity for something and our main character Galadriel has an affinity for destruction. When she asks simply to like clean the floor she gets a spell for basically blowing up the entire school kind of like that. So because of this big destructive power she has to be very careful and she's trying her best not to kill or harm any fellow students but everyone perceives her as this very evil very dark person so she doesn't really have any friends. However after school hero Orion Lake saves her from this big bad monster they kind of strike up this reluctant friendship and the plot kind of goes from there. I gave this book 4.5 stars. I really really enjoyed it. The thing that I think this book does the best is magic system and atmosphere. I really really enjoyed learning about how the Scholomance works, what kind of monsters there are. I honestly, while I was reading this book, I wanted to sit down with Naomi Novik and make an illustrated guide to all of the monsters. Like I wanted to draw all of the monsters that were described there and it seemed so interesting like she just had infinite ideas and they were all so different and unlike anything that I've read about before. I really enjoyed that and I also really enjoyed the magic system. It had a lot to do with language, with phrasing and with actual different languages and how they're used for different types of spells. So because I personally like languages, I really enjoyed that aspect and I really enjoyed how studious Galadriel was and how much time and effort she put into studying. Yeah, those are the aspects that I really liked. However, I am hesitant to recommend this book to a lot of people because this book, first of all, doesn't really have a plot. This is a pretty universal opinion. Not much happens. This is more of an exploration of the setting and relationships between the different students and Galadriel rather than a plot-driven book. Another point that a lot of people have noted and I think is a big turn off for a lot of people is the writing style. First of all, the first chapter really feels like it wasn't edited. I don't know what happened but it feels like it was just a huge rough draft info dump where Naomi Novik was trying to basically put as much information up front as possible so that the reader knew what was even going on but because of that it just became very hard to understand. It was very convoluted, there were a lot of run-on sentences and overall it was just very hard to filter through the information that was being presented. I had to read every paragraph two or three times. After the first chapter it did get easier but I'm not sure if the writing style got simpler or if I just got used to it. I would recommend reading the first couple of chapters and if it doesn't get easier then you know that the book is just going to continue in this format and you probably will not like it if you didn't like the first few chapters. There is also controversy going on around this book about some representation in the book. I will leave a link to basically a very good own voices discussion who um, talked about biracial representation and different representation of different races in general in this book and I think they make very good points. Basically I would say don't fall for the controversy without reading this book yourself because I think a lot of people until the controversy was sparked didn't even realize there was anything wrong with the book so it's definitely something that was kind of taken and blown out of proportion. Not without reason, I'm not saying there isn't any problematic things, there's definitely one passage that while I personally would have never read as offensive, 
would be offensive to some communities. So yeah, I would just say check out the resource I provide down below. It's a Reddit discussion and I think it touches upon all of the points really well. Don't listen to everything you hear about the book because people really like to just create drama without actually analyzing what they're reading or without even having read the book. Familiarize yourself with the situation before you make any judgments of whether or not this book is actually offensive, is all I'm gonna say. So the next two books I'm gonna talk about together because they're part of the same series and those are Girls with Sharp Sticks and Girls with Razor Hearts by Suzanne Young. So these are dystopian YA books about this girl academy that is very closed off from the rest of the world and has a very rigorous training schedule. So we follow our main character Mina who is very dedicated to being studious and to really following the rules and what she's being taught but after a small incident that kind of throws her perception of what is happening a little bit off balance she starts discovering and questioning what is even happening in the school I am purposely being vague just to not give anything away. I would definitely recommend picking this book up. I personally gave the first book 4 stars and the second book 3.5 stars. I really enjoyed learning about the girls' relationships, the girls' relationships to the different men, and by enjoyed I didn't mean actually like happy enjoy. These books are quite dark, they're an obvious commentary on patriarchy and how men basically kind of run the society and how skewed the expectations are for men and for women and while I usually really really enjoy feminist works, this one is very on the nose and it's very clear that this book is probably targeted toward a bit of a younger audience but I'm also questioning whether the execution is the best it could have been because I think if I was a man reading this book, I would be very... I would feel very attacked and offended because most characters in this book basically put all men into this one box. Like, all men are violent, all men are controlling and power hungry and they basically can't change and we should just get rid of them and we should rule the world, like girls should rule the world, no men allowed to make any decisions whatsoever. Like that's basically the outlook of most characters in this book and it does get repetitive and it does get too much to the point where you start questioning whether their views are even valid or if they're maybe even worse or just as bad as the men that they're trying to basically read the society of. The author does have certain characters question whether or not this extremist view is even correct and there are male characters that are positively represented, that are not evil, that don't have any of those bad qualities. They're just regular human male characters. And so while the book does have that representation of hey, not all men are the same, not all men are horrible and controlling and power hungry and just want to control women, the vast majority of the characters who have these views that it gets tiring and kind of, I would probably say in some ways offensive to read because I as a woman started feeling bad for all of the men who may have read this book or might read this book because I feel like this book has a good message but I would feel so bad and so attacked. I did enjoy these books, but I do feel like they read a little bit younger and they give a little bit too much away. They don't make you as a reader think as much as I personally would have liked to think. I feel like everything is being very explained and put forward right in front of my nose for me to just take. Overall, I like the books, but I do think the execution could have been more subtle and more nuanced. So the next book that I read was To Be Honest by Marian Martin, which is a book about this plus-sized girl who lives with her mom and her mom went on this TV show that is kind of like a competition for weight loss and so she obviously lost a lot of weight and she kind of got brainwashed and she came back and she started nagging her daughter about weight loss and kind of became very controlling of what her daughter eats and just her lifestyle choices 
And while our main character is very confident in her body and she doesn't personally have any body image issues, this book does show how this nagging and persistent attitude towards a certain thing can basically contribute to negative perception of yourself and doesn't have any positive effects basically. The book follows our main character as she struggles with that and then she meets a boy, it starts becoming a bit messy because she has her whole situation with her mom where her mom is basically going off the rails about this Thing. And when he starts being introduced into her life more through one thing or another, he gets exposed to basically the craziness of our main character's mom's attitude. And our main character just kind of like struggles balancing her relationships and her friendships and keeping it together and not letting her mom get under her skin. I gave this book three stars. I think this book wasn't bad by any means, but it was also not mind-blowing. I could definitely relate to a lot of what our main character went through, and I thought it was a pretty good representation of what happens when people who are close in your life are very controlling of this one thing about you, and they really try to change something about you that basically is really in your hands, and shouldn't be fully influenced by everyone outside and not by you yourself. So I think that was represented pretty well and it did talk about obsession with body image and about mental health but it didn't go very deep into any of these things and this is why I didn't find this book mind-blowing. I like the plus size representation, I think we don't get enough of that in books and it's very nice to see that, but I do wish that we would get more representation of different body sizes and not have that be part of the plot in any way. It would just be there, that would be nice too. If you're just looking for a fluffy contemporary romance to read with just some surface level discussion of these kinds of topics, then this book is good for you and I would recommend picking it up, but overall I would say this is just an average contemporary book that wasn't bad but didn't do much for me, so yeah. So the next book I read was Forest of Souls by Lorian Lee, which is a Y fantasy. This book I gave four stars. It was a pretty solid four stars, maybe like 4.25 stars. Forest of Souls follows our main character Sersha, who is basically training to be the Queen's Shadow, which is a unique title in this world. Basically, every couple decades a new shadow is being trained to be the Queen's personal kind of spy and assassin. And so Saoirse is one of the students who is being trained by the current Queen's Shadow, and the students don't know who other fellow students are, but Saoirse accidentally finds out one of the fellow students and so she decides to take the opportunity to basically sabotage the student and take the mission that was assigned to the student and do it herself. By the way, none of this is a spoiler, this all happens in the first chapter and I think this is all in the synopsis too. But basically it ends up being a trap, there is a big fight that goes down and Saoirse's best friend gets killed. And that's all I really want to tell you. There is a lot of changes that happen in Saoirse's life after this, and she ends up going on this dangerous journey in trying to figure out who she is, if what she's been taught is even true. There are a lot of politics and power dynamics explored in this book, and I think that's one of the strongest parts of this book. I think it had a really interesting plot that kept you on your toes and kept you questioning who was basically the good guy and who was the bad guy and what the intentions were for different people. I don't want to give anything away, but I do want to say that I think this is one of the better flushed out worlds in YA fantasy that I have seen lately, so I would definitely recommend it for that. I think the political intrigue and relationships are very intricately woven and explored well. I also really like the atmosphere. The book features prominently the Forest of Souls, which is in this kingdom, 
which is basically this very dark forest that eats people, <laughs> essentially. So it traps people and they get mushed into these tree trunks and then the souls of these victims are trapped in the trees and the trees become very violent and the forest keeps expanding and it's basically once you go into the forest your chances of survival are very low but Sersha has to go through the forest multiple times throughout the book because there is no other way to basically get from point A to point B for what she needs. Every time she was in the forest it was so dark and scary <laughs> in a way. If you're easily scared by things I would say you can still read this book. It's just very unsettling when you're in the forest. The whole idea of the forest is kind of very creepy and gets under your skin, but I think it was very well written. So overall, I really, really enjoyed the world building and the character exploration and the political intrigue of the book. I think this is one of the better YA fantasy that I've read this year and I've read quite a few. So. I definitely really enjoyed it and I'm super excited to continue with the series. I'm not sure if it's going to be a du duology or a trilogy, but I am nonetheless very excited to continue. So I would highly recommend you pick up this one if Y fantasy is something that you read. So the next book that I read was another Y fantasy and that was Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. This book I gave 3.5 stars. I did enjoy it quite a bit, but not as much as Forest of Souls. So before I go into what I thought about it, let me give you a quick synopsis. So Basically, in this world, there are bone criers who have to ferry the souls of the dead from the realm of the living into either like hell or heaven, basically. In order to prove themselves worthy, each bone crier upon initiation has to kill their one true love. So in this book, we follow three perspectives, two bone criers who are best friends, Ales and Sabine, and Bastian, whose father was killed by one of the bone criers and he actually witnessed the whole ritual. And so basically, Ales is getting ready to perform this ritual and her best friend Sabine is very reluctant. She's kind of questioning whether the ritual is even necessary, if it's possible to not kill your one true love. She is very hesitant about killing any live beings. This book does feature a lot of animal killing, so if that's something that you're sensitive to, be aware and probably stay away from this book. And so the night that Ales plays the flute, Bastian shows up on the bridge, but he has the mission to kill a bone crier in revenge for his father's death. So he knows who they are and a fight ensues. Bastian and his accomplices kidnap Ales and Sabine proceeds to look for her best friend. And that's all you really need to know. This book kind of went in a bit of a different direction than I expected. I really like the exploration of character relationship. I liked learning about the magic system and I liked learning about characters' backstories and how they're connected to each other. I think there was quite a bit of drama. Sometimes it went a bit over the top, but overall I really enjoyed this book and I'm definitely planning to read the next one. I do think that some things were just very predictable. I was basically never surprised by actual plot twists. I know I said I didn't expect where the book was going to go, but I meant that in a general sense. I didn't really see how the events would unfold, but once I started learning about characters, every single plot twist and every single revelation we had, I was like, yep, I knew that. I, I, I was never surprised. I don't think I'm usually very good at guessing or having predictions about anything in books. I just thought that every revelation we could have known about much earlier because it was so obvious to me. So that's the only reason why I didn't rate it as high. I do think the book and the plot is interesting. I just wasn't surprised by any of the plot twists or revelations that happened throughout the story. But I would still highly recommend picking up this book if you enjoy YA fantasy. This is by no means a bad one. I'm definitely intrigued enough to continue reading. So the next book I read is Shock, a poetry book. Who is 
she if you have seen my dark academia book tag video you would know that i don't read poetry in english at least i do like russian classical poetry but that's pretty much it i've never liked english poetry because it doesn't rhyme and it's very convoluted and hard to understand what the point of it is i just don't like that but i read a poetry book by halsey we just called I would leave me if I could. Most of you wouldn't know, but Halsey is one of my all-time favorite singers. I've seen her in concert and I absolutely love her music. She is definitely one of my top two or three singers of all time. While I was hesitant because it's poetry, I also knew that Halsey writes very lyrically and very beautifully. And I knew because she's a songwriter that she probably has a fair amount of rhyming poetry too i decided to just give it a chance and i didn't give this collection a rating because there were some poems that i really didn't care about and some poems that i really did enjoy but overall i would say this is very much what she writes about already in her music there were a few poems that hit me very hard and i felt kind of called out but at the same time it was Halsey's experience that i just resonated with and i really enjoyed seeing that not in a good way, because most poetry in this is very sad and tragic. It wasn't something good to relate to, but it was something that I related to nonetheless. One thing I want to mention is that this book has a lot of trigger warnings. If you are planning to pick it up, it touches on so many heavy topics, primarily abuse and sexual assault and child sexual assault and child abuse that is quite prominent it also has a lot of explicit passages so if you're not comfortable with that i definitely didn't feel comfortable reading a lot of these things but you're not meant to feel comfortable it definitely shows that halsey has gone through so much in her life it's a miracle how she has persevered i kept thinking that i wouldn't have been able to i admire her so much for that but yeah oh i'm getting like so sad <laughs> thinking about this but yeah if you're a halsey fan this is a nice poetry collection and i think it has like 150 pages so there's quite a bit of poetry i'm definitely gonna go back and like tap the poems that i really enjoyed overall i just cherish this book because this was also drawn designed by halsey and i do really like this design yeah it's just very nice to think that now i have something connecting me to one of my favorite singers if you like poetry especially if you like hard hitting poetry like heavy poetry this is probably a good one but please know i have no point of reference i don't read poetry I probably won't read a lot in the future anyway, so it's just a one-off kind of thing. <laughs> okay, and the very last book that I'm gonna talk about today is another YA fantasy. Can you see a trend? I've basically just been reading YA fantasy, apparently. This is a very hyped book that has been very popular in booktube in the last month or so, and that is none other than Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I listened to it on audiobook and it was like 18 hours long, so was one of the bigger ones i ended up giving it around four stars i do think this is a very strong why fantasy but i wasn't blown away by it like most people that i've seen on book to be and let me explain why <laughs> so before i go into my thoughts here's a quick synopsis in this book we follow our main character brie who has recently lost her mom in a car accident and after that she decides to proceed with her decision of going into an accelerated kind of high-end program in the University of North Carolina. She is still in high school but because of her good grades she and her best friend get accepted into this accelerated program and they go to live on campus far away from their home and Brie on the very first night witnesses this magical attack that gets her introduced into this world of legendborn which is basically a secret society of the descendants of Arthur she is unclear of what exactly is happening with them but all she knows is that she witnessed something that she probably shouldn't have witnessed and she gets introduced into this society and because Brie is black, there is a lot of backlash from quite a few members. And also because she's a girl, 
but mainly because she's black, she gets a lot of backlash from the society members. Basically, she decides to infiltrate this secret society to learn more about her mother's death and whether or not it was really an accident or if the society had something to do with it. And she also gets close to this very charming young man <laughs> that she meets on campus due to circumstances and he ends up being part of the society. They both get thrown into the whole political mix of things and they kind of have to deal with the fallout and with everything that they basically start <laughs> with the society. I did really enjoy the book, especially the first 60 or 70 percent of this book. I was really loving I thought that it was, if not a 5 star, it was a very strong like 4.5 stars. I was really, really loving the book. But by the end of the book, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but where the story got taken, there was a lot of revelations that just seemed a little bit too ridiculous and too much. Everything that happened with our main character and like with all of the people, it just seemed like there were too many things that aligned. It felt like too many reveals for one person, like too many things for one person to be. That just kind of turned me off because I was like, oh here we go, another like super duper chosen one trope. Wasn't realistic how many things certain individuals could or couldn't do to me personally and that's what turned me off and that's why I was disappointed because I felt like the author just put way way too much into certain individuals while reasonably it was explained and it wasn't like it just happened out of nowhere. What kind of really rubbed me the wrong way was that this society and Bree's family tree go back so far and while Brie isn't familiar with her ancestry, the society has this very structured and very clear who's related to whom and kind of like who's the descendant of whom. It's very important. There's all these ranks and everything. And I feel like it was just unrealistic for so many firsts to happen. Brie was the first to be this and this and this and this and this and so many things. And then for the society, it was something that they've never seen in all of these generations. And we do learn about Brie's family history and how her ancestors were also these, like, not to spoil, but they were, like, special people in certain ways. And it's just so unrealistic how with such a complex history and with magic being passed on through generations and everyone kind of being in this one segregated space, like, it's not like everyone was thrown around the world and they weren't intersected and they didn't know about each other because they weren't physically in the same space. Like, Bree's mom went to the same university and, like, her ancestors were also, like, at least relatively in the same area. And so it was so hard to believe that Brie would be the first for all of these things. I know if you haven't read the book, you would probably be confused by now. But yeah, I just thought there was too many novelties about this one character. And it felt like too much. I am a special snowflake times a million. And I'm like, okay, we get it. You're like super duper special. Why are you this special? I'm getting a little bit annoyed and tired of seeing all of these characters who are like the first to be something already. But Brie is like the first to be like 15 different things. Other than this, the book was great. I really enjoyed exploring like this whole complex system and the interconnections and the politics and there were like betrayals and backstabbing and like power hungry people. I do wish we learned a little bit more about the magic system. You know how I said in Deadly Education we would see so many different monsters? In this book the monsters were so much more limited because they mentioned like certain monsters multiple times. One monster appeared like three or four times throughout the book and it was like different instances of the same kind of monster. I wish I could see more, but it felt like it was a bit repetitive at that point. Nonetheless, as I said, I did give this book four stars despite my critique. I do think it's well written, I do think it's interesting and 
by no means do I feel like it was stretched out considering that it was an 18 hour audiobook never did I feel like it was dragging and I was very excited to pick it up every time so I think the pacing and the plot was exciting and intriguing the ending for me personally just rubbed me the wrong way because of this special snowflake effect other than that I do think the hype is pretty deserved there was a lot of conversation in Legendborn about race and I did think it was well woven in and it kind of illustrated certain concepts well. I think it was done well. Sorry if the angle changed, but my camera cut off right about as I was wrapping up and <laughs> talking about my last book. But basically my final thoughts were that this book had really good representation and it was done well, in my humble opinion. And I do recommend reading this book. I think it deserves the hype but be wary that the ending kind of has this very special snowflake syndrome that might be a little hard you have to like suspend this belief quite a bit but overall very good book highly recommend very good YA fantasy and very exciting and easy to get through i think if you need a plot driven fantasy that kind of gets you sucked in and you want to keep reading this is a good one yeah that's all i really want to say about that book and this concludes my recent reads wrap up the next wrap up would probably be at the end of the year look forward to end of the year wrap ups and book awards and best and worst books of the year and exciting videos like that. I am hoping to film and edit much more once I am done my university work and I have a bit more time to focus on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched until this point, you're a champ and I really appreciate it and stay safe and I will see you in my next one. Bye! For different types of spells...